So seed two then expands out to seed one, which expands out to a thousand dead bodies. Um, so those will be the three things that we will record on Saturday. Yeah. We'll start at V. Thousand dead bodies under my bed, all clocked uh, with the breed of the living. It sounds like it suggests some kind of a narrative, but uh, I'm really... Um, I don't like narratives that much. The idea of the setup deals with uh, two things. It's the, uh, so there's this, this is a piece uh, about like a, a simultaneous chamber ensembles interacting with each other. The seating has been calculated based on the spatial character of instruments, which is unique, and it's, uh, the instruments, of course, they, they don't have a, a uniform radiation like a balloon pop. They have like this complex uh, uh, radiation di directivity patterns. Uh, some instruments are more directive, uh, strong directivity, like the brass instruments, and uh, some instruments they don't have that much of a directivity. So the idea is for me normally uh, this is how I work. Like you have the uh, simulation, acoustic simulation of an instrument, uh, which is already a very complex uh, process to uh, you know really accurately uh, calculate the directivity patterns of an instrument in a meaningful way, uh, by which I mean in a way that makes sense with the real world conditions. And then once you have this uh, special, uh, the simulated spatial character of an instrument, then you have to render that into a simulated room in order to understand how that uh, directivity pattern uh, communicates with the space and vice versa how the space communicates with the, with the instrument. And then uh, there comes the idea of orchestration, of course, you know, how to have to group uh, certain instruments with certain uh, distances and uh, positionings and how that group of instruments would uh, correspond to space and how space would correspond to uh, the instrument. Tilbert's rhythmic notation is detailed, but just because notation is detailed doesn't mean that where you put your sounds in time is the only thing that that rhythmic notation is telling you. The notation he uses, although it's a notation that's been around for a long time, it's a, a, a kind of notation that, for example, when Brian Fernyhoe was writing pieces using this kind of uh, rhythmic notation, it was controversial back then and it's still a little bit misunderstood. The misunderstanding comes mainly from if you have a fixed conception about rhythm as just telling you where in time to make your sounds, then this uh, rhythmic notation will uh, give you some puzzles to deal with. If you have a little bit of a broader understanding of rhythmic notation as not just telling you where to make your sounds, but in hinting at how to phrase those sounds, and sometimes, this is the paradox, sometimes hinting at how you should make the rhythmic notation inexact. The fact of uh, inexactitude being necessary or desired or possible, this coming out of the rhythmic notation, that is a thing that, uh, that performers have to uh, get accustomed to. Simply doing, simply seeing a septuplet and playing seven even notes, that will get you some of the way. But seeing what those seven notes are actually doing and taking on board the fact that what those notes are actually doing might require you to bend the sevenness of this septuplet. Turgut doesn't say specifically how these kind of bends work in his own music. It's a thing where uh, you, you see the music and it suggests to you a certain phrasing and it is, it's that phrasing that you should also follow. You have to, you're constantly having to prioritise between putting the notes exactly, I'll use scare quotes, exactly where they're written, so exactly where the mathematical proportions on the page tell you they should be. You're constantly having to relativise that and the phrasing. 
that the, uh, that the rhythm also suggests. So the rhythm does point in two different directions. It points in the direction of strict proportions and it points in the direction of phrasing and specifically phrasing that may require you to bend those proportions. <laughs>